Thank you, Chairman Cassidy, and to our ranking member, Sanders, and to our witnesses for a very productive uh, conversation about the state of and the future of K-12 education in our country. Um, I, I want to pick up where the conversation left off on AI, and I think it is important that um, for us as lawmakers, we have a responsibility and we can turn our outrage into action. And so I am uh, pleased to be with you all on this, this journey. And last week, my colleagues, uh, Senator Husted, um, Senator Cassidy, and I introduced the RAISE Act to encourage states to develop academic standards for artificial intelligence. And while we can and should carefully consider the extent to which AI should be in the classroom and how it should be integrated into classrooms, we can all acknowledge that our students need to know what it is and how to use it safely and effectively. The problems, the protections, and also the possibilities. I'm going to start with you, Dr. Winthrop. You've discussed AI extensively, not only in, in your testimony, but also uh, through the hearing. From your perspective, how do you define AI literacy, and why do you think it's important for our students? Thank you, Senator, for this really important question. AI literacy is different from how kids are directly using AI in or out of school. AI literacy is critical, it's essential, um, and I am very supportive of holistic AI literacy, which uh, includes things like how you engage uh, in AI. This is prompt engineering, this is the fact that AI hallucinates, it's how it works. The second thing is how you manage AI. Uh, all of us, but young people, are gonna grow up and have to manage multiple AIs. The third is how you create with AI. This is um, how to use AI to solve problems. And the fourth is how you design with AI. These are the four components out of OECD, EU, and code.org. Many, many hundreds of educators have gone in to develop those. So those, to me, are the four really important components of AI literacy. And at a federal level, what do you think we need to be doing to ensure our students leave high school with the skills they need to succeed as AI continues to impact our economy? I'm concerned about, um, I was former Secretary of Labor in Delaware, I'm concerned about people getting left behind, I'm concerned about unemployment and what impact, but I also know that it can create opportunities. And I think as was said on the panel, there are, um, a, one of the things that we don't measure our skills as students do leave. So if I could ask an, an, any panelist that's interested in answering that question, what do we need to be doing at a federal level to make sure our, our students have the skills to succeed? I'll jump in. I, as we, again, stay with the AI theme, um, who, who is driving the conversation? And so I think, uh, you know, we've, we've heard in this room already today, if the business community is the driver of where AI is going in our society, uh, then it will be driven by the bottom line. It will become about money um, and profit. Um, if we allow educators uh, to drive this, then it will become about learning. And school has an opportunity to certainly be disrupted, but in a very positive and profound manner. Um, AI literacy is critically important as we think about the gaps that are, ex that are currently being developed among our students, our students that do not have opportunities to work with teachers and in school settings that don't support AI literacy, uh, those students are already being left behind. We're creating a new gap. And so ensuring that, that school leaders um, at the, the district, state, and federal level um, are listening and paying attention uh, to that. We're, the divides are being created. We have opportunities uh, if, with the right leadership to stop them now. Thank you, Dr. Murray. Yes. Dr. Raising my hand because I don't know how to do this. Uh, okay. So in Indiana, our General Assembly is working on guardrails. We also approach this from, okay, how might we leverage AI for the good? Uh, and by the way, the, the example, appalling, disgusting, right? That is absolutely unacceptable. But how might we leverage it for the good, vetting key vendors? But we launched two problem statements. How might we leverage AI to reduce teacher workload so more of their time is spent with kids and not paperwork? And how might we leverage AI to increase student tutoring? And so we have really worked to study that. Um, so it's a, it's a balance, and I'm thrilled that you are going to discuss this further. 
Thank you. I'll just end with uh, another area. We have bipartisan legislation with Senator Katie Britt on immersive technology as well, and using that with our community colleges and training, because it literally can be a way to bridge some gaps, but also make it interesting, that spark for those students. And so thank you. I yield back. Senator Kim, you were going